If you've been tracking the real estate market lately, you are seeing a lot of properties close over the asking price. So how much over the asking price do you need to offer in order to win a property in today's market and how do you decide? That's what we're talking about today, starting now. Hi, I'm Jessica Janung with Active Realty. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel. I am a local realtor here in the Marietta Temecula Valley, and we make a new video just like this one every week telling you everything you need to know about buying and selling property here. So you found a property you love and you've decided to make an offer, but you have no idea how much to offer because you've been hearing about all the multiple offers and people bidding way over the asking price. So how do you decide on a price? There are two sides of the equation that you should consider. The emotional side, how much do you love and really desire to make this property yours, and the logical side, which is gonna involve some data and analyzing the comps and the market to help make this determination. So we'll start with the emotional side and I'll give you the advice that I give my typical buyer clients when up against multiple offers on a property they really want. These are hard conversations to have lately and this market does seem really crazy and unreal, but it is your number of no regret time. What is the number if you lost the property you wouldn't have wished that you'd gone higher? That is the number we need. So if you do lose the property, you know that you gave it your best shot. This truly is a highest and best market. Some would-be buyers in our market are not willing to bid over the asking price and do not want to pay over the appraised value. And while that is understandable, if that is the case, this is not the market for you. Are you overpaying if you're offering over the asking price? My opinion is that the market value is not the appraised value. It's how much someone is willing to pay for a property. If 10 buyers are willing to pay over the appraised value, this means that the comparable sales are lagging the market value to me. This goes without saying that I would never advise my clients to go over an amount that put them in a financial situation they were not comfortable with. So it's good to know before you start your home search, what monthly payment range is your comfort zone because you do not want the American dream to turn into the American nightmare. A great lender is gonna, be help, is gonna help you determine your payment comfort zone and what purchase price that would translate to. If you are considering a move here and you wanna learn more about the area, check down below in the description. I have an updated relocation guide with lots of information about what it's like to live here. It is available for immediate download. We just talked about the emotional side of the equation. Now let's talk about the logical side. Based on the location and features of the property, how much over asking are other buyers that you're competing with willing to pay? We are gonna need some data to be able to help us make this decision and a knowledgeable and experienced real estate agent. I don't recommend using your college friend who lives like an hour away to help you. I recommend finding a local expert. So I'm gonna tell you a brief story about why you need a local expert. There was an out of area agent that was listing a property in Temecula that I had multiple cl buyer clients of mine calling me about wanting to see they were interested in this property. This property was priced at 450,000 on the very low end for Temecula, um, but it was in an older area. So I could see the surrounding comps, they were probably in the 400,000s. But this property had a lot of features. It was a single story, it had a three car garage, RV parking, pool in the backyard. It had paid for um, Tesla solar panels. So um, I knew instantly by looking at this property that it was very, very underpriced. And as it turns out, none of my clients did end up making an offer on this property because as we were communicating with the listing agent, um, they were letting us know kind of where the offers were at as, as the days went on. And like last time we checked in, it was at 585,000. I'll have to look up what the property um, ultimately ended up going for but this agent they were out of the area they had no idea of the value of the property so all of the data in the world is not going to help you um, in instances where a property is way underpriced or a property is way overpriced once you have found a home that you love we'll call it the subject property and you're ready to make an offer your agent should provide you with a comparative market analysis also called a cma this is a report using mls data that analyzes similar homes that have sold near the subject property 
Here is a sample of a CMA that I was working on over the weekend for a client. This property was located in Winchester. It's a four bedroom, three bathroom. It's 2589 square feet. And there were a total of eight comps that I was able to find. Four of those comps are sold, three of them are pending, and one is an active listing. Our best comp was a sold comp and it was only one block from our subject property and it had just closed within a day or two. So it was super recent, which is an important factor. It sold for 560,000. And of the four sold comps, the average price of those sold comps was 550,000. So my best guess about where the appraisal was gonna come in at was somewhere between 550 and 560,000. Our local market here in the Temecula Valley is fairly straightforward to determine valuations. We have a lot of track neighborhoods and oftentimes can even find an exact model match near the subject property. The most important thing I try to help my clients understand from the CMA is where I think the appraisal is going to come in at. With that information, we can decide is the property overpriced or underpriced. If we are bidding over my opinion of the appraised value, do they have the cash and are they comfortable spending the extra out-of-pocket funds? <laughs> so how much to offer? How likely are other buyers to go over the asking price? So down towards the end of the CMA report is a very helpful page called the sold property analysis. It says the average of these sold comps sold for 106% over the list price and they sold in five days. The average buyer is going 6% over the average sold price, let's say, which was about 550,000. That would be 30,000 over the asking. So somewhere in the $580,000 range as a guide. Real quick, if you are finding this information helpful, we would love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Um, I'm gonna move on briefly and we're gonna talk about new construction bidding wars and give you a little bit of a guide on that. So um, a couple builders in our area have gone to the offers format if you've seen any of my recent videos. So Pulte Homes is one of them. I had clients um, bidding over the past several rounds on the Spencer's Crossing Pulte community called Aspen. And my last client was uh, my only client to actually get under contract and win one of the homes in the bidding situation. So he got a visionary home, he went 40,000 over the asking, and like I said, he was my only client to actually win. I had several other clients over the previous few weeks bidding. I had clients bidding on the smaller floor plan, the gateway and the pathmaker, and they were going like 15 over and none of them got it. I had another client bidding on the visionary. They went 25 over, which I thought was a pretty solid offer. They did not get it either. So my general guidelines with new construction for that community anyway, is going to be somewhere in the 20 to 50,000 over. So let's talk about another Pulte community out in Winchester, it's called Eagle Crest. I had a client who got a cancellation through the bidding process. The cancellations don't always go back to the bidding process, but this one did. There were four bids on the property we found out after the fact. Um, because it was a cancellation, the previous buyer had already selected the structural options and the design center options. So uh, my client was not able to choose any of these and they were already included in the offer price. Luckily that buyer chose great selections. They would have chosen those things anyway. So it worked out really well. So because everything was included, the starting price was a little bit on the higher side. So it was 610,000 from, I'm just kind of pulling this from memory. Um, and I believe my client went 10,000 over to somewhere in, in the six 20 range to get that property. So I think that he didn't have to go as high as like what's going on in Spencer's Crossing because the starting price was already a lot higher. The starting prices in Spencer's Crossing are more into the mid fives. And since this one was starting in, at 600, um, over 600, he didn't have to go as much over the asking price to secure the property. Hope that helped you try to get some guidance on what to offer for new construction and resale homes. We'll see you on our video next week. Bye.